This video that I've made, I just wanted to let you know, has been heavily influenced or inspired once again by this fantastic book, Brave Borderland by H. Drummond Gold. In it, Drummond talks about loads of these obscure border reaver towers and castles that I've never heard of. And they certainly don't appear on a lot of the literature that I have, like this border reaver map. But they're real, and they're out there. If you want to go and find them, hope you enjoy the film. You know, I've been studying history and walking in the hills and Scottish borders for years. Looking at ancient monuments. But it's only when you sit down and begin to take stock of actually how many castles and fortified towers they are that it becomes completely mind-blowing. So what I've done today is I've picked this small area just south of Jedburgh, very close to the English border. And I'm going to take a look around see what castles I can find, ones that I've never been to before. And the first place that I'm looking for is known as Slack's Tower. Slack's Tower. Apparently Slack's Tower was destroyed in the 1540s by Henry VIII's marauding armies during the rough wooing. And you can see why, because it's so close to the border, literally just right there. I can see the tower just down here, right in the middle of nowhere. If you were to classify this structure, it's probably got more in common with one of the Northern English Bastille houses than it does with a, a Reaver or Peel Tower. It's a bit lower, but still built for the same purpose. Defence, defence in times of war. Somewhere where you could take your family and your cattle and keep them safe from marauding English Reavers and soldiers. But you can see that the site's been a lot more than just the, the house there. There are signs of buildings and roads and other structures everywhere. What does strike me about this place straight away is the size, the size of the bricks that have been used in the construction. They're huge. It's almost like a different type of building construction than you see in most of these towers. It's just, it's unthinkable that a place of such power, a bastion of strength, nobility, a status symbol for hundreds of years is now just, just forgotten. Used as a shelter by cattle, obviously, by all the, the bullshit on the floor. I'm 
unfortunately there's not a hell of a lot written about Slack's Tower here about the history of the place and its inhabitants but it really is a wildly evocative place a place full of ghosts and memories not just a forgotten tower but a forgotten village a place that was once alive but is now a shadow a shadow on this agricultural landscape is one, one of literally hundreds of towers and fortified structures and castles in this area so let's go and find some more at the War Memorial in Jedburgh Town Centre there one of the most common names on that memorial guys who died in the First and Second World War is Oliver a very common border name famous riding family and the tower I'm going to go and have a look at now was one of theirs it belonged to the Oliver family and it's known as Dykraw. But what remains of Dykraw? Let's find out. This is the road to Dykraw Farm. The remains of the tower are in here somewhere. This is it, I'm afraid. All that's left of the once mighty, and I say once mighty because you can see that the masonry here is huge as well, probably even bigger than Slack's Tower. The once mighty Dykraw Tower, home and base of the Oliver family. But this one's even closer to the English border, so you can imagine it really being in the front line of fighting in the 15th, 16th centuries. And it was destroyed again during the rough ruin like so many places in, in the borderlands. This one section of what was once obviously a huge thick wall and a huge powerful structure is all that remains another ghost another spectre on the landscape anyway let's move on a little bit further north a little bit away from the border because there are far more towers than Dykraw and Slacks and the one I want to look at I think is a little bit spectacular tower that I'm heading for is perhaps a little more famous than the first two it's still not on the tourist trail mind you and the family that inhabited and owned this tower is perhaps a little more famous also that was the Douglas family and the tower is known as Timpendine Tower
pretty sure the tower is around here somewhere. And here it is, Timpendine Tower. But you can probably see from the massive undulations in the ground here that this is so much more than just a 16th century border peel tower. They are a clue to the use of this building. Another one of these once magnificent structures that has just decayed to nothing. Like the other two castles we've seen today, Timpendine was destroyed during the wars of the Rough Ruin. It was rebuilt and occupied by the Douglas family until 80, the early 1800s when it was bought by the Scots. interesting thing about Timpendine to me is these vast ditches that surround the site. They're clearly not 16th century border reaver peel tower defences, they're much much earlier than that. They were thought to be Roman at one point but the latest theory is that they're native and some sort of native hill fort. Like so many of these old sites in the area, the ancient, i.e. 15th, 16th century, has been constructed on something far, far more ancient. Different layers of history built one upon the other. You need to peel away these facets to see exactly what's going on in these sites. For some reason, this place has been special for centuries, millennia, eons. So there, another three fantastic border castle or tower sites for you to visit. But I really am just scratching the surface here. There are literally hundreds, hundreds of sites like this in the Scottish borders that you need to go out and visit and explore and enjoy. you explore these places and see them firsthand, you really do begin to appreciate how much fighting went on here. This was not a peaceful place, this was not a good place to live in the 15th century or the 16th century. It was a place where people afforded great time and 
wealth into their defence, keeping themselves alive. And it didn't always work.